So today we will um, start chapter five and the first section in chapter five is about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So, um, so what are eigenvectors? So let us look at the definition of eigenvectors. An eigenvector of an n by n matrix, which is of course a square matrix of size n by n, A is a non-zero vector x, such that Ax equals lambda x for some scalar lambda. A scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of A if there is a non-trivial solution x of Ax equals lambda x, and such an x is called an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalues lambda. Okay, in other, in other words, lambda is an eigenvalue of n by n matrix A if and only if the equation A minus lambda x equal to zero has a non-trivial solution. That means has at least one free variable. So, all right. Um, so, as you know that linear algebra studies a linear transformation, which are uh, represented by matrix acting upon a vector. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces are basically the properties of a matrix. Okay, in general, a matrix acts on a vector by changing both its magnitude and its direction. So when we multiply uh, a vector with a matrix, in another word, when you use a matrix for its transformation, generally it changes its magnitude as well as direction. However, a matrix may act on certain vectors by changing only their magnitude, keeping the direction unchanged, okay? Possibly reversing it. So these vectors are the eigenvectors of the matrix, uh, given matrix, all right? So a matrix acts on an eigenvector by multiplying its magnitude by a factor, which is positive if it is direction is unchanged, if its direction is unchanged, and then if the direction is changed, then uh, the magnitude will be negative, okay? If the direction is reversed, change means just the, just the opposite direction, then this becomes uh, the, the eigenvalue will be negative. The factor will be negative, and this factor is called the eigenvalue. So the concept of eigenvectors, eigenvalues are very useful in throughout pure and applied mathematics. Eigenvalues are also used to study difference equations uh, difference equations and continuous dynamical system. They provide critical information in engineering design and they arise naturally in such field as physics and chemistry. So you can check this website for further applications of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. One of the you know, beautiful application of eigenvalues and eigenvector is maybe in vibration and resonance field, okay? So one application of eigenvalues and eigenvector is in the analysis of vibration problem. So you have probably heard of the collapse of Tacoma narrow bridge in the, in the, in the Washington state in the US. So for a period of time, the bridge would move in the small waves and became a tourist attraction. One day the wind was approximately 40 miles per hour and the oscillation of the bridge increased to the point where the bridge collapsed. There is a still debate as to the cause of the collapse, but one explanation is that the frequency of the wind was close to the fundamental frequency of the bridge. So the fundamental frequency of the bridge is the magnitude of the smallest eigenvalue of a system that mathematically models the bridge. So the lowest frequency is the most dangerous for a structure or the machine because that mode corresponds to the largest displacement. Let us watch, uh, you know, the the moment when the bridge, uh, Tacoma bridge, collapse. Tacoma Bridge, Washington, opened only a few months ago, was built at a cost of over six million dollars. But misfortune overtakes the great structure. These are some of the most amazing pictures ever recorded by a newsreel. The actual collapse of the world's third largest suspension bridge. Only at 35 
25 mile an hour wind is blowing, but this apparently sets up a rhythmic swinging of the bridge, which increases with each swing. Finally, the swinging road and the suspension cables give way and plunge into the water below. Fortunately, the only casualties were a car stalled on the bridge and a dog. So, all right. So, we saw one application uh, when the engineer, you know, uh, miscalculated the eigen vector eigenvalues, then that's, um, that's, that's a very disaster um, happened in, in the case of Tacoma Bridge. Now, let's look at a close look what I mean uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues, okay? As you can see, a famous picture here, Mona Lisa. And uh, in this picture, there are two vectors. I will call the red vector as V1 and the blue vector as V2, okay? Now, there is a transformation happen, okay? A transformation. So after the transformation, it's a shear transformation. After the shear transformation, what is happening is that the, the, the red vector V1 has changed its direction. Whereas the blue vector V2 remains the same. Okay, so I denote this by V1 prime. So after the transformation, so V1 changes into V1 prime and it changes its direction. Whereas the V2, the blue vector remains the same. It doesn't change its direction. There is a possibility that the direction, I mean, the magnitude may change, but in this case, the magnitude also remains the same. So that means if I do this, uh, you know, V2, V1 and V2, the magnitude is same. That means the, the eigenvalue is one, okay? V1 divided by V2. I mean, V2 divided by V2 prime is one. So there is no change in the magnitude. There is no change in the direction. So magnitude may change again. And whatever the change in the magnitude, we call that eigenvalue. And if the direction doesn't change, that vector is called the eigenvector. In another word, stay the same vector is called the, um, stay the same direction vector is called the eigenvector. All right. Now let's look at one example here. So example one, we are given a matrix A, a vector X, another vector U. Now, in part A, we want to check whether X is an eigenvector or not, whether U is an eigenvector or not. Okay, first let's look at part A. Uh, let me just copy that matrix, copy the question, and X is given to be one, two, and U is given to be two and three. Now, how do we check that? Let's look at the transformation, okay? What happens when I multiply that vector with matrix A? So if I multiply these two vectors, three, eight, zero, minus one, and one and two. So if you multiply, you're gonna get three and six, which means three times one and two. So that means three times X, okay? So in this case, AX equals three X. And this three is called the eigenvalue. That means if we multiply this vector X with matrix A and matrix A will transform Okay, the transformation that we get is three times the vector X. Let's look at this geometrically.
So we have initially our vector x is one, okay, vector x is x is two and uh, one and two, vector x is one and two. So that means x is one, y is two right there. This is our vector x. And when I multiply x with a, I got the result as three and six. So after the transformation, this x will change, that matrix A will change x into three and six. So one, two, three, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it is right there. Okay, three and six. So notice that Notice that this is our original vector x. And after multiplying this with a, I got this vector ax, okay, which is actually three times greater than x. So it remains that it stays on the same direction. Therefore, clearly x is a eigenvector. And let's look at x is eigenvector with eigenvalues three. Now let's look at part, I mean, the second vector, which is u. Okay, so for u, a u will be, a is three, eight, zero minus one, and u is two and three. And if I multiply that, so what do I get? If I multiply these two vectors, I'm going to get 6 and 13. So this is not something that can be written as a multiple of this 2 and 3. There is no lambda scalar quantity. So that um, can be written this way. Okay, so that means u is not. So x is an eigenvector with eigenvalue three, eigenvalue generally written as lambda equal three, whereas u is not an eigenvector. Okay, u is not an eigenvector. All right. So um, that's how we check whether we can, whether the vector, you know, keep its direction the same or not. That's how we check. So part B in the same manner, you can calculate uh, by yourself. Um, just in part B, uh, do it yourself. just for fun. Now let's look at uh, part two. The question is how to check if some scalar is an eigenvalue of the given matrix, okay? So that seven is an eigenvalue of the matrix. Now by definition, if seven is an eigenvalue of the matrix, then if seven is lambda equals seven is an eigenvalue of the matrix A, then we can write by definition AX equals lambda X equals lambda means seven X. In another word, we can write this as AX equals seven X, which means AX minus seven X equals zero, which means x seven seven my sorry a minus a minus seven
x equal 0. But notice that a minus 7 is undefined. In order for this to be defined, I will write i. i represents the unit matrix. Unit matrix. i is unit matrix, OK? Unit matrix i. OK, so now let's go back to the definition. What we have said in the definition is, Lambda is an eigenvalue of an m by n by n matrix A if one if and only if the equation a minus lambda i x equal to zero has a non-trivial solution. It means has at least one free variable. So that means if we find a you know if we if we solve this system and if there is a free variable, that means seven must be the eigenvalue uh, for that matrix. So let us solve this system. So to solve this system, consider augmented matrix. A minus lambda i and zero. Let us consider that. Now, what is A minus lambda i? So you can figure A minus seven i, sorry, A minus seven i. So what is a minus seven i? A minus seven i becomes a is, we know that uh, a is one, five, uh, six and two, minus seven i is one, zero, zero, one, which gives me one, six, five and two, mi minus seven, zero, zero, seven. And that's gonna give me um, minus six, six, five, minus five. All right, so that means this augmented matrix becomes minus six, five, six, minus five, zero, zero. Now change it into Isolon form, okay? This is a step one. Now we will do changing change into epsilon form. So it's pretty easy to change into epsilon form. I trust that everyone know how to change it into epsilon form. So um, if you change it into epsilon form, you will get one minus one, zero, 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 zero. So clearly there is a one free variable, right? So clearly, the system, there is a free variable, which means the system has a non-trivial solution. So if there is a free variable, then that means seven must be. So seven seven is an eigenvalue for the matrix of the matrix A. Now, the question also asks us to find the eigenvectors. So let us find eigenvectors. How do we do that? Let us write down the general solutions, okay? General solution. So you already know how to write the general solution. This is your x1, x2. So basically you get x1 minus x2 equal to zero and x2 free. So this gives me x1 equals to x2. So the general solution is x equals x1, x2 equals x2 and x2 equals 1, 1. So one one is one possible uh, you know eigenvectors. 
width x2 not equal to 0. So each vector of this form with x2 not equal to 0 is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal 7. All right. So we found the eigenvector as well. We proved that 7 is an eigenvalue because the system clearly has one free variable. So seven is an eigenvalue by definition. And one of the possible eigenvector is this. All right, so let's look at uh, another definition, eigenspace. What is eigenspace, okay? So here is the definition. The solution set of all solution of A minus lambda i, where A is a given matrix and lambda is a eigenvalue. A minus lambda i x equal to zero is the null space of the matrix A minus lambda i, which is called the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda. So the, the, the eigenspace consists of the zero vector and all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. So let's look at what, how to find um, eigenspace, okay? In example three, we are given a matrix A, and if an eigenvalue of A is two, so lambda is given two, find a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to two. All right, once again, here is the hint. So first, by definition, if two is an eigenvalue, then by definition, ax equals lambda x. So if two means, you know, lambda equals two is eigenvalue. So that gives me ax equals two x. This gives me a minus a minus 2x equal to zero, but since this matrix to be defined here, so I'll write 2i equal to zero. So let us solve this system, all right? So to solve, to solve the system, consider augmented matrix A minus 2i and 0. So what is A minus 2i? Let us calculate that A minus 2i. So A is given to be 4 2 2 minus 1 1 minus 1 and 6 6 8 minus two times i is one zero 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 one zero 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 one because in the in the earlier case matrix a was two by two therefore we consider the unit matrix of size two by two but here the given matrix a is three by three size so i consider the uh, you know the unit matrix as three by three size so that the addition and subtraction of these two matrices actually uh, occurs okay defined so if you subtract that, so your result is going to be two, 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 minus one, minus one, minus one, six, six, six. Okay, so augmented matrix will be now, 
a minus two i is two, 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 negative one, negative one, negative one, and six, six, six. And then zero, zero, zero. So this is our augmented matrix. Now we need to change it into Isalon form, okay? Change into Isalon form. And I trust that you know how to change it into Isalon form. And when you change it into Isalon form, it will be two, negative one, six, zero, 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 zero. So this is your uh, Isalon form. Now, let us write down the general solution for this. General solution is x1, x2, x3. So you'll get 2x1 minus x2 plus 6x3 equal to 0, x2 and x3 free. So now we have to express the basic variable, which is x1 in terms of x1, x2 and x3. So if you solve this system, I mean this, this equation, so you'll get x1 equals half x2 minus 3x3, okay? So our general solution x is, so x, which is x1, x2, x3 becomes x1 is half x2 minus 3x3, x2 and x3. So this gives me, I can write this as x2 plus x3 and here x2, it will be half there and there is one, there is zero and x3 is, uh, for, for x3, you'll get negative three there, zero and one, all right? and x2 and x3 are free. So we need to find the basis for the eigenspace. So this vector, this one, let me denote this by V1 and V2. So the basis for the eigenspace, basis for eigenspace, corresponding to lambda equals two is given by, by the vector V1 and V2, okay? Or you can write, if you want, you can simply just write down the vector as it is, which is V1 is half, one, zero, and V2 is negative three, zero, one. So these are the so this these two vectors actually are the basis for the eigenspace. Okay, now let's look at one theorem. The eigenvalue of a triangular matrix are the entries on its main diagonal. The proof part will do it later, but let us um, use this theorem to solve um, the, the next questions, okay? The eigenvalues, if the matrix is triangular, then to find the eigenvalue is pretty easy. You just choose those uh, entries in the main diagonal. For example, uh, in example four, so you're given a matrix A, which is clearly a triangular matrix, as you can see all the, you know, from the main diagonal, all the um, upper part is zero. So this is clearly a triangular matrix. So find the eigenvalues of A. Since matrix A is triangular, matrix, the eigenvalues of A are lambda equals three. Okay, so the main diagonal, entries in the main diagonal is three, one, and two. So lambda is three, one, and two, that's it.
Okay. Now, um, let's move to the next section, 4.1. In, in section 4.1, if the matrix is not triangular, how, how can we find the eigenvalues of the matrix? We'll learn that in our uh, next, next class, next sections, okay, 4.2.